Hello Ratbags, it's Jade, welcome to another Grounded video. Today I'm going to take a look at every single piece of armour currently in the game that you can get without cheats. And then I'm going to show you all the stuff you can get with cheats and kind of previewing what we may get in the update on the 26th of August. Remember it's been moved forward by one day. Lots of people are thinking the water update is going to hit. I'm still not too sure, but either way, I did want to give you a full preview. I have covered this in separate videos, but this is the first video I've done that's got every single armor piece, equipment, item in the game. So it's kind of like a review, kind of like ranking them, how important they are for you playing the game, whether or not you need them. I'm going to go through the pros and cons and the side effects, including grub armor, finally sussed out. Agree, disagree with my opinions, just make sure you like the video now. Let's review all of the grounded armor pieces. Okay, so straight off, the might hats and the aphid slippers. These two pieces, you can pretty much motor around the map fairly early on in the game at a decent speed. The aphid slippers is gonna give you that extra speed boost and the might hat does give you that extra stamina recovery. But are they actually worth it? Well, the might hat does give you one whole defense and that's a lot better than some of the other head pieces. And the aphid slippers only gives a fraction of a half of a defense. It does give you that speed boost. They're relatively easy to get the aphid slippers and the might hat is okay to get might fuzz but you do need five grub hide for it and there's so many other things you could be using some of that grub hide for. I actually think the might hat just isn't worth your time. Sure, as I said, it does give you a little bit more defense than some of the other pieces but obviously the other pieces when you wear them all as a full suit you often get better bonuses. So personally, I rank that as probably one of the worst pieces in the game. The hyper stamina is okay I can't really see a use for it really compared to some of the other stuff. The aphid slippers pretty much the same thing. Eventually when you unlock the bee armor or even the spider armor you'll find you'll be able to whiz around pretty quickly and there isn't really much call cool for you to go super quick. You can get pretty much across the map in a relatively short time. So again I don't see the point in getting aphid slippers especially when the aphid slippers also cost 10 might fuzz. You think of how many arrows you can craft with all that might fuzz. Maybe slightly unfair because they're not full suits. Again, don't take it too much to heart that I'm putting some of these as worse. Obviously, they've got their uses. And a lot of these armor types, I like the way the devs have kind of really looked at it and said this is going to be one particular use, you're going to use it, rather than having just one OP piece of armor. Although there may still be a little bit of an OP armor set. But obviously, the gas mask is good for going into the weed killer area. But right now, there's no point in going in there. Currently in the game, and unless anything changes in the next couple of updates, there is only one secret laboratory there, which we can't access just yet. And as far as I know, there are no types of the scabs lying around, so you're not going to necessarily be going around just to find them. There may be one mission marker at the weed site, but other than that, there really isn't any real reason to go in there. You might need some of the resources from some of the creatures, but you can pretty much get them from infected mites. So you don't necessarily have to go all the way deep inside. And you don't necessarily need the Mars to get infected mites as they're on the edge. The only exception to that is maybe if you need some stink bug parts. And it could come in handy while you're trying to take out a few of them as they're pretty tough. In the future it does look like there will be a burgle chip that you can get in the weed killer area. But again we don't know when that's going to be added. Again especially because it does cost stink bug parts. And you're going to need them stink bug parts for other items. The weevil knows that you'll often get, you have to kill quite a few weevils to get hold of. And then that fuzz, well, you'll probably have quite a bit of that hanging around, as you only really need it to craft one boat or so. The other thing that goes really against the gas mask for any other use, of course, is it's rubbish defense. It really is just for one specific use at the moment. Next up, we've got the eye patch and eye patch plus. Now, this is a great piece of kit you should be thinking about making as soon as you get the chance, mainly because it's so easy to make. You only need one sap, two fiber bandages, and one woven fiber. And for that, you're gonna get much better damage when attacking creatures. And if you get the upgraded version, not only do you get better damage when attacking creatures, you also get reduced stamina consumption too. You can see attack and attack stamina are its bonuses. It doesn't offer much in defense, but for sure, if you want to go and take out maybe quite a bunch of creatures, maybe you need lots of ant parts, or you want to get lots of mites, this is really super good to use. Now to get the eye patch plus though, does involve quite a bit. You're gonna need 2,500 science points. You also need to find the burgle chip that's located in the ant hill to the west. Take that to burgle, 
and then he'll unlock some more blueprints which you can then buy using your science points. I've already done a video showing you guys where to get a whole host of science points, so if you're still a little bit low or short on them, go and check that video out and get loads so you can go and get the upgrade. Next up is the Grub armor set. How useful is it? Well, it does give you quite a bit of defense compared to some of the other stuff like the Clover, but again, not by much. It's also not that hard to make either, although you are gonna need, again, quite a lot of the Grub hide. In fact, you're gonna need 12 pieces of Grub hide. And that can be definitely hard to challenge to get hold of some like that man. Obviously, it's really good for stamina. That's what its main focus is. So if you're going from long distance to long distance, then this is really gonna increase your maximum stamina and that's a good reason to have it. Also on top of that, when you're running around, the set bonus plump and juicy doesn't actually stop you from taking full damage and it doesn't make you more attractive to other creatures. Instead, it's pretty similar to the clover armor bonus set. It's gonna reduce your need for water. This has been tested a bit more thoroughly now and I can confirm after spending some time in the Helios Discord, the guy that's been making the very first proper big mod for Grounded, that there's lots of numbers and variations, and it pretty much does say that the Grub Armor doesn't actually reduce full damage. Instead, it does mean it's got a better reduction in terms of water than even moist. And that kind of makes sense, because when you're running, that's what I think normally causes you to get more thirsty. And so if you're running big distances, because the armor gives you lots of stamina, then you want it to also mean you've got the side effect of reducing your water. So yeah, pretty good if you need to get from one outpost to another and you just want to get there in the quickest time possible, or at least without having to take too many breaks. Nearly all the armor sets will reduce your full damage a little bit, but no, it just means that you don't need to drink as much water. And for that reason, that's why I've ranked it pretty lowly. It's not the best side effect, and other than getting from place to place, I definitely wouldn't maybe waste all of the grub hide on this. For me, some of the best armor to use, really, for quite a while, is gonna be the Clover. Yeah, it's basic, and yeah, it doesn't give you much defense. But actually, particularly if you're playing on the harder difficulties, this stuff is vital. Why? Because it's about what it gives you. The set bonus on Moist means you don't have to drink as much. And the buffs where you can not have to eat as much as well for each piece of the armor, pretty much means that in the beginning stages, you definitely won't have to waste as much time looking for food or water. Yep, it doesn't give that much defense, but it's super easy to make and craft. You only need clover leaves and some woven fiber and sprigs, and you've got yourself a decent little armor set. For sure, if you play in regular mode, then maybe the grub armor is the better one. But honestly, the way I've been playing WoW lately, I've found that this armor helps out so much more. So ant armor, it just about gives full defense. It's just a little bit lower than the acorn armor, but you do need a lot of ant parts and you're also gonna need the ant acid as well. Plus it does use up quite a bit of mite fuzz. I don't rate this as highly simply because the bonus and buffs are really very specific. You only need ant armor if you are going into the ant hill or you're gonna be gathering lots of planks or stems. Obviously each piece gives you that extra buff that you can carry more items. And so for a full suit of armor, you should be able to carry eight pieces of grass or eight stems, as opposed to only five. What I do like though, is that you can mix and match it a little bit. So say you did maybe want to have something like the eye patch plus, you'll still be able to get a bit of a bonus with the ant set wearing just the chest and the feet. Now, why is it good for the ant hill? Well, you should know by now that the ants will leave you alone if you go down the ant hill. Pretty much if you come across any soldier ants, they're gonna leave you alone. As long as you don't attack them, they won't do any damage to you. Reportedly also, they'll fight for you. If another creature attacks you, they will also start helping. So it's a good set of armor, but it really does only have them two uses. And comparatively, it's still better maybe getting the oak armor and using that more regularly than the ant armor, unless you are gonna be doing it just for that one thing. So what is the best armor set out of tier one? It is of course the acorn set. This stuff gives you maximum health and it also means that you can block a lot more as well. That's what the Uncrackable is. Instead of being like blocking strength increasing the amount, Uncrackable pretty much increases how much you can actually block. Blocking strength pretty much stops you from getting stunned, whereas Uncrackable actually increases your blocking strength overall. Little bit of a difference, but both ways they obviously help you when you're defending. And for me, that's why the Acorn Armor is the best. 
It gives you that maximum health. So you get that as a set bonus on top of what it already says for its defense stats. And its defense stats are pretty good as well. Overall giving you four. With the right type of weapons, you'll be using your acorn armor a lot in combat. And out of all the armor tier one sets, it's my personal favorite. I'd even go as far as to say it's better than the spider armor set. And also hence why I rate it above some of even the tier two sets. Sure, you get more defense out of some of these, but the bonuses of extra health and that uncrackable mean that the oak armor actually matches up with the spider and possibly the bee armor. So now we're on to tier two. So spider armor. I am gonna say it right now. Yes, it does give you more protection than a lot of the other armor sets. It is a tier two armor set, it should do. However, balanced against the resources you need to craft it and the side effects that it gives you, it really is pretty worthless. Before you all start writing angry comments, let me explain. Straight off, you're gonna need two spider flames to do this, which means taking and killing then two spider wolves. That's no mean feat. The spider chunks themselves, you're still gonna need at least 11 of them, and that means killing at least five or six spiders. And then you've got the berry lever. Now the berry lever is something that's gonna be used in all the tier two items, and it comes to the point that you may have to try and decide what is really worth it. Remember, each berry lever requires three berry chunks. So to craft all three pieces of the spider armor, you need two berry lever, three, and two. So that's seven pieces times by three, so 21 berry chunks. That's a lot of running around the hedge, avoiding some of the spiders there, and obviously some of the larvae. When it gets to that point, you really will be trying to decide which armor set's gonna be more useful and beneficial, and which one you want to kind of use all that berry lever on. Obviously, when you get to the point where you're harvesting and gathering so many of these items, then sure, go ahead and you can craft the spider armor. And if you've got two spider fangs around, then yeah, it's gonna be better than all of the tier one items. And with its bonuses to hyper stamina, where it will recover stamina pretty quickly, it'd definitely be a good one for getting around the map pretty quickly, or possibly even if you are taking on some fights with other creatures. But its set bonus of the hunter's prowess, which pretty much means you can go a little bit quicker, I think it's pretty wasteful. I definitely would like to see them add a different type of set bonus, particularly as it's pretty similar, just in a different way to either the bee armor and some of the other stuff like the aphid boots. The idea being that when you're using the spider armor, it pretty much is gonna allow you to catch up and keep on top of some of the creatures you're hunting. You'll basically be able to sprint for longer. So for me, the spider armor isn't that great for combat. It is more just about getting from A to B quite large distances a little bit quicker. But as I said, in terms of resources that you need to craft it, there's definitely better armor sets in tier two that you can use. And for me, I still think some of the other armor sets are better. Now we're gonna start taking a look at some of the newer stuff. Pretty much these arm sets are only gonna be used for one thing, and that's obviously diving down and exploring the water areas in the next big update. Currently, there are no actual armor values for the Koya defense stuff that I'm showing, but I can't imagine it's still gonna be that big. And I don't think it's certainly gonna be any bigger than what we've got in the other tier two sets. Instead, it's all about what they're gonna do for you underwater. Obviously, the headgear is gonna help you with breathing, so pretty much your O2 is gonna run out a lot slower. The chest piece doesn't actually have a buff just yet. And the feet, well, they'll help you swim quicker. So yeah, a very particular type of use, hence why it's not gonna be good as your everyday armor sets. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe they will add a huge amount of defense to it. And if they do that, then the Koi armor will be a lot more higher ranked. But for now, I'm gonna take a guess and say that it's not gonna be any bigger than maybe the ladybug or spider. Still not 100% sure what their bonus is gonna be either overall, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be something water related. The other thing to consider is a lot of resources are gonna be needed to craft this. It really is almost like end game gear. Cattail fluff, eelgrass strands, and lily pad wax are obviously all items that are gonna be put in once the water update hits. And on top of that, you're gonna to need to go and kill lots of the koi fish. You also need to make a set of flippers, which is like the tier below these. And it's pretty much the same for the other water-based armor just right now. You've got the rebreather, which is like the basic diving suit. It's gonna give you the veteran diver buff as well. Pretty much doesn't give you any defense just yet. It doesn't mean you'll be able to swim underwater infinitely, but it will extend how much O2 you have. Then we've got the diving mask, which is an upgrade to the rebreather. 
So again, just extends how long you can swim underwater. The strider skates currently still aren't working either. They're gonna allow you to walk across the water. Again, I'm hoping that the enemies we've already seen in the water are actually pretty dangerous so that you would like to have a pair of the skates so that you could just simply get across the water super quick. Otherwise, I hope that when you're swimming, lots of the creatures will kind of aggro you. Otherwise, the skates are gonna be pretty useless too. One thing to mention about the Koi armor, the actual headpiece itself, the diving head set, that has to be upgraded along the way. So you get the rebreather, then you upgrade that to just the normal diving helmet, and then you upgrade that to the Koi helmet. And each stage is gonna give you longer underneath the water. Same thing goes for the flippers, almost. You need a pair of flippers before you can make the Koi flippers too. You can see you need a whole host of the underwater resources. So I'll probably go over that in a bit more detail, but they're gonna be pretty tough to get. There's lots of enemies in the water. So yeah, it's definitely gonna be an experience going through it all. And briefly, you see that I am actually wearing the underwater scuba diving gear. Now, it hasn't actually got some art in game yet, and I'm guessing it's going to be something added in the way, way future. Maybe as a final story piece, or maybe it's just a piece of dev equipment. But clearly, judging from the test build items that are spawned in, it wasn't ready yet. So hopefully we'll get some more info about that in the future. Firefly headlamp I really love. It's so cool that it actually acts as a proper light for you to go and see and look around. The amount of times I have run out of a torch, having one of these bad boys means you never have to worry about that again. The Firefly, obviously we've seen the stuff version, but we don't actually know when it's going to be added. This may still be some time away. So when it comes to the bee armor, the rotten set that you find in the anthill is going to be okay. And obviously it gives you quite a bit of defense, just about four defense, which is pretty good and easily one of the better arm sets you can find early on in the game as you can pretty much run through the ant hill to grab it with or without the ant armor if you're good. I'd rank it just below acorn armor, but the upgraded versions are even better. Once bees are in the game and we can actually collect bee fuzz, which you need to craft them, you can see their defenses are gonna be closer to something like seven. On top of that, the sprint distance takes a lot longer to go down to, so you will be able to get out of tight situations pretty quickly. It's their side effects though that are really good for a particular use. And that is the fuzzy cushion bonus that you get when you wear all three pieces. Pretty much it means you're gonna take a massively amount of reduced fall damage. Earlier I told you guys that lots of the armor does this. Well, it's mostly because of the defense stats they have. But this B armor really does stop you pretty much dying from almost any height. So I figure it's gonna be useful for the hedge, but there's one problem. You can go ahead and just use dandelion tufts if you accidentally fall. The rotten version is good to have early on in the game, but when it comes to actually making the next tier set of armor, I wouldn't necessarily go for the B armor. Again, it's all dependent on how much berry level you've got. It's still gonna cost 27 pieces of berry chunks to craft all of the B armor. So when you really look at it in order of tier two, plus the updated stuff, the ladybug armor is the best. You'll be using your Koi stuff or some of the other lower tier breathing items to get around the water update. But other than that, you probably won't be using it much else. The spider armor sets are good, but it's simply just too many resources hard to get to actually craft them. And the bee armor sets are okay. But again, compared to how easy it is just to get some dandelion tufts to give you the same set bonus, it's really not worth your time. Next, we've got the ladybug armor, which in my opinion is the best in the game. It pretty much gives you the best overall defense points out of all the arm sets. Not only that, it does increase your chances of getting knocked out, much adding better blocking strength. And it's the only armor set that right now would currently replenish your health. When you've got all three pieces on, you get the Scarlet Embrace. And that means over time, you'll recover your health. You can see my bars going up slowly. The other thing as well is it all goes back to what kind of resources you need to craft these armor sets. Again, all of these need berry leather. You need 11 pieces of berry leather again, and that's gonna mean 33 pieces of berry chunks. It will take you forever if you're gonna go and get all different types of armor. So you really wanna be choosing which one you're gonna go for first. That's why you should go for the ladybug. It's also the easiest to get some of the other resources as well. Ladybugs can be tough, but they're not impossible to kill. They're pretty derpy. You can get them stuck on pieces of grass, and so once you've killed three or four of them, hopefully you should get a ladybug head. You'll get the ladybug parts pretty easy too. And then simple case of just getting some flower petals. 
Compare that to what you've got to do to get the spider armor set, killing like five or six spiders, two wolf spiders, plus all that berry leather. And it really does show to me that ladybug armor is the best. And that so far is all the armors that have been added to Grounded as of pretty much the end of August. Obviously they may add a lot more in the future and I'm really hoping they're going to do something with like cricket legs to make boots and stuff like that. But I couldn't find any more references in the game files just to armor. There's plenty of references to new weapons and items and I'll probably do that in a separate video where you can go and check out my water update video that I showcased a lot of that stuff. But in terms of just purely armor and items that you're going to use to wear, this is it for now and for the next few months. If I have missed something, please let me know. Or if you've got any tips about getting it, let me know. And let me know why you think a certain piece of armor is better than others. I am JPG, the home of grounded and survival content. Make sure you're locked down with notifications turned on. And I'll see you for the big update on the 26th of August. And hopefully I'll be showcasing all of this stuff.